Making Comics 101, issue 14, Perspective. <laughs> Greetings, people of the internet. I'm Scott with Surfworks Art Labs. Welcome, mad creators, to the Underground Laboratory, where together we are going to create some awesome comics because this is Making Comics 101, issue 14. We are talking about Perspective. So, yeah, perspective, hmm, I know that's probably what you guys are thinking. You're like, Scott, what's the deal? Like, last week it was like backgrounds and now our perspective. Can we get back to the fun stuff, like the penciling and the drawing stuff? Well, this is all drawing, and hopefully, uh, once we dive into it, hopefully you'll find that it's fun too, but these, these are crucial things that we need to know if we're gonna be an awesome comic book artist. I mean, everything you draw needs to be in perspective, even, yes, people. Um, we can draw figures and everything, but we need to know how to put them into perspective, how we put them into actually a physical space. And by learning perspective, we're going to learn that, plus we're going to learn how to do pretty much all this other cool stuff. Because once you get a handle on perspective, that is another step to learning how to draw just about anything and everything. So yeah, let's dive into perspective. If you were to boil perspective down to its basic principle, it is this, that the further things are away, the smaller they're going to get. So you, as a kid, you learn this, that a person over here, if you see a person way down there, he's not this tiny. If you go like that with a person over there, he's not gonna be this tiny, he's further away. We all understand that. So that's the basic principle. So we just need to expand on that. Now in this issue, I'm gonna present the like bare bones basics and give you a general overview on perspective, but you are going to have to dive in and you're gonna have to learn a little more. I have an awesome recommend, and this isn't sponsored anything, but uh, this book by David Chelsea, and I, I have met David, we've had him, we've talked to him, we've had him on the Artcaster show that I do with Joshua Kimball. Just amazing guy, you may know him from the 24 hour comic challenge. He's like one of the people that have participated and, and done it the most, if not the most. You might have the world record on that one. But, and he may have, I don't know if he started it or not, but anyway, be, beyond that, he is an awesome comic book illustrator and a master of perspective. And the reason why this book is so great is because it's perspective for comic book artists. And if you are familiar with Understanding Comics by Scott McCloud, it kind of takes that same approach where you're learning perspective but it's done as a comic. I've read a lot of books on perspective and this just made it make sense to me. One, because it's a comic and just it's the language that it's done in and the visual cues and just the way it is presented, it is, uh, for my money, it is the best book for learning perspective, especially for comics. So if I can remember, I will put a link to this book. I highly recommend that you get that. Now this is a first, he's got other books on perspective too and some of them may be more updated. This was his first. So look into this and then look at some recommends on Amazon and maybe even get some of his later books. Now I find that a lot of artists try to put perspective aside. To them it's more like it's super advanced, which yes, it can be, but I think it's, it's not something that you want to just, ah, I'll do that later uh, down the road. I want to do this other stuff first. And I got into doing perspective rather early in my art career. Actually the first job that I ever had was working at an architectural firm doing Doing perspective drawings more or less so yeah that's that was me as sort of a baptism of fire where the first job I ever had was was pretty much all perspective so that really helped me out but uh, the, the good thing is back when I was doing this it was a lot more difficult we didn't have some of the tools and things we have today we'll get in on a bonus issue we're gonna get into clip studio and some of the awesome perspective tools that they have for working digitally but back in the days I was working on stuff like this these giant grids let me show you this so here we had to lay these all out on these grids and yeah it was not an easy task just to give you an idea this is an arcade that I worked on if you can see uh, this is uh, these were in the malls this was uh, a cyber station Namco cyber station if you guys are old enough to remember what arcades were um, now they're kind of coming back there's some retro ones but this was a really cool one but as you can see there's a lot going on a lot you have to remember so fortunately because I learned to do perspective designing these retail spots and these these buildings and things that really gave me a little bit of a leg up when I started to do comics professionally. So I have some experience doing perspective, but even though I've done quite a bit of perspective drawings, it's always a challenge every time. And I'm, I'm probably like you guys where anytime I've got a scene that's going to require a lot of perspective, I'm like, 
Oh boy, here we go. But once I, it, it's just, if that's that initial hurdle, if you have to draw a big, you know, cityscape or something like that, I'm like, oh, this is gonna, this is gonna be difficult. But once I start getting into it, I really, I kind of enjoy it. I, I, once everything starts falling into place and I'm like, well, man, this is, this is all coming together and I did this thing. So I try not to shy away from it. Although as we talked about in the previous issues on background, you don't have to do these massive perspective drawings in every panels, but you do want to, to set your scene up, draw a really cool perspective drawing just to let people know where you are and then you can kind of pull back from there so let's talk a little bit about the different kinds of perspective the first one we want to touch on and these go in order and it's going to be pretty uh, easy for you to kind of figure out where we're going with this but the first one is one point perspective so one point perspective is the easiest form of perspective to sort of wrap your head around it's usually great for beginners it's the easiest to comprehend but it's probably not the the, the one you want to use all the time but you can get some really cool one perspective drawing so I wouldn't shy even if you learn all the different forms of perspective you can still do some really cool stuff with one point perspective with one point perspective we're dealing with what is essentially a head-on view before we dive deeper into that there's two things we need to understand we need to understand what our horizon line is and our vanishing point so our horizon line is basically our eye level. So wherever we're standing, that line that goes across here is your horizon line. And it's, because, it's called that because if you were just looking out in an open plane, say the sun's coming up over that, what you're seeing right there, that's your horizon line, aptly named. So the other thing you need to know, and we've got only one of these in one point perspective, is your vanishing point. And of course, as we move on to two and three and, and so on, we're gonna have more vanishing points. But with this, with one point perspective, we have one vanishing point. So imagine uh, a train tracks, a street view, a tunnel. What you're seeing is, your scene is gradually going like this until eventually it all comes and merges at one epicenter and that is going to be your vanishing point. Also aptly named because that's where everything pretty much vanishes. So those are the things that you need to know. So this grid I showed you before, this is a one point perspective. You can see the one vanishing point right here and everything, the, everything kind of goes in here and that's your one point perspective. Now I will show in the bonus issue, I will show some examples of me actually creating this, but for right now, I just wanna get the principles out there for you. Now just because one point perspective is the easiest, it doesn't, doesn't mean you have to shy away from it or that it can't be super effective. I wanna show you something here. Believe it or not, look how complicated this thing is. This is one point perspective. Look at all the detail and everything that goes into that. Now, no one's gonna look at this and say, wow, man, you went the easy way. You just did one point perspective. No, one point perspective is very effective if you use it properly. It doesn't just have to be like train tracks going off in the distance. Although, for starting, that's what you should start off with. The first, if you're just learning perspective, that's what you wanna do. The one vanishing point, your horizon line, a straight on view, and you know you can really do some really cool stuff with one point perspective. All right, so two point perspective. It's a little different. We're, we're adding another point, another vanishing point. A two point perspective is probably what you're going to use most often. It's the most common form of perspective that you're, you're probably gonna find yourself using. So you're really, I mean, you could get, if you know two point perspective, you could probably get away with a lot without even having to learn three or four or even five point perspective. Some of those later ones you rarely use at all. You know, and I would again encourage you to at least get a basic understanding of each of these forms of perspective and we will cover them all here. But two point perspective is going to be sort of, it's it's almost like the workhorse. It's the one thing that you're gonna use all the time. So you definitely wanna learn two point perspective. Now where two point perspective differs from one point perspective is the viewing angle. We can kind of, whereas one point perspective, it's all pretty much your straight on view. In two point perspective, we're still on the same level. Our horizon line is still gonna be right there, but we can turn from here to over here and we can get a bit of a different viewing angle. And I'll kind of show you this example back here. This, all right, so this is this is a, a two point perspective. Now we've got, uh, you can see how things kind of, there's a, the, there's a vanishing point off here. It's actually off the page. A lot of the times, if you know, unless you've got something super tight, your vanishing points are going to go off your drawing table. Like when we used to do these, we would have these large desks 
and our pages will be here and imagine a desk about three times the size and our vanishing points would be off here and off here and then what we do is we put a little thumbtack here and then we'd get a straight edge and we kind of move it back and forth uh for example here imagine this so this is a this is an angled ruler here all right now imagine this is your vanishing point with two point perspective We've got one vanishing point here, and then we've got another one here. So you have this on its axis, and then you can move these up here, and this is your vanishing point, and vice versa over here. So hopefully that'll sort of give you a little understanding. All right, so I have an example here of two-point perspective. I didn't have anything from comics uh, readily available that I could show you, but this is a project that I did for Best Western, and it is just sort of a cutaway view of a hotel. Um, Again, we have our horizon line here. Now, the other thing you have to understand that anything above the horizon line, you're gonna see what's underneath. Anything below the horizon line, you're gonna see what's under. So whereas here we can kind of see the floor, we can start, and you can see how the floor, the angle, we're getting closer to our horizon line, and we can see where we don't see as much as that floor. And as we move above the horizon line, we don't see the floor at all, but we do get a little hint of that ceiling. All right, so here, here is where our vanishing points go off. You can kind of see how everything trails back here. All right, so we've got our, our ruler. You can kind of see where these angle in and where this trails off here. So our vanishing points kind of go out here. Same thing on this side, they kind of go out here and then right through there is our horizon line. Now with any of these different perspective views, it doesn't matter really which way is up. For instance, we've got two point perspective here. We can take that same two point perspective and flip it like this. Now we can see where here, these lines go in here, our, our vanishing points go off here and vice versa go up this way. So maybe if you're looking down at something, like a bird's eye view, you can just flip your perspective grids and you can get a different angle. So here's a great example from Art Adams. Uh, this is two point perspective, but it has been flipped around. Here we've got our vanishing points trailing off here and down here and then, but you can see uh, our horizon line and everything that lines up along that, that horizontal axis is straight. So this is two point perspective, but it's been flipped. And you can see, uh, well, maybe you can't see, because it's, I don't know if you can see that, but did you see this grid that he's laying out? He basically lays out this massive grid and then he draws his figures and stuff around it. So that grid is always there. And uh, yeah, I mean, this is, this is some of the tedious stuff that you can get involved with when you're working on perspective. Or you can use Clip Studio Paint, like I started doing now, and it can save you a lot of headache. But sometimes, all all this little detailed stuff it can be rewarding once you learn how to do it and do it right all right now on to three point perspective where we've got what three vanishing points okay so the difference about three point perspective is whereas before a two point perspective we've sort of got a view from left and right now we've introduced up and down for instance this in this two point perspective uh, you can kind of see that all everything angles out here to our vanishing points but these lines are relatively straight so all of these vertical lines go up and down. Uh, if you could just take a, a ruler and go right across, they're all gonna line up. Now with three point perspective, we've got another vanishing point, say up here or, or down here. So these are going to kind of go up here. So we've got these vanishing points, but then this starts to go here. Well, let me show you an example right here. This is three point perspective. You can see where here, we've got our vanishing point over here. We've got our vanishing point over here and then another vanishing point here. So as you can see, there aren't any straight lines. You can't just take a ruler and go across right here. Nothing is gonna line up because we've got these three vanishing points. So here's an example from uh, a panel that I did for this series this wild thing if you've been watching you've seen me work on this but here here we can see where I'm dealing with three-point perspective here we've got our vanishing points going over here we've got another vanishing point going off here and then another one going off here now I could have done this in two-point perspective where these lines would these these uh, the vertical lines would just be straight but with three point I've got a little more of an angle and it creates a little more impact now even though this is a bird's eye view we still have our same horizon line. We're looking, we're basically looking down, but if you look, once we start getting, we can still see a little bit up here on the top of our buildings, but you can, you can kind of see we're seeing less of them. 
um, even though we are looking down from above. And this, so this drawing was all created in Clip Studio Paint, and Clip Studio has these amazing perspective tools where almost anything you draw, you just draw the line. Once you set up your, your grid, you just draw the lines and everything will automatically snap to the grid. It's pretty amazing, so much easier. In a bonus issue, I'll show you a little more how that works. Now, I know I'm running through these rather quickly, uh, so you may, <laughs> you, it may be a little overwhelming. I'm hoping not. I'm hoping that you can kind of get the principles here and then in further exercises we can show you a little more how this works. But really it's just a matter of investing time. You know, other than just this video, there are tons of other perspective videos that, that are out there. I just want to show you how sort of it relates to comics and get the basic principles out and do a little bit more exercises. But this course is, it's an entire course, so I, I can't spend all that time just on perspective. There's a lot to learn, but all that information is out there. So I encourage you to go out there and look for it. Now we've covered one, two, and three point perspective. That's pretty much, if, if you need the bare minimum, that's all you really need. Some of the other stuff we're gonna talk about isn't as crucial, but it is interesting to be aware of it, and maybe you do wanna use it at some point. All right, so let's talk about some of the other forms of perspective. Let's talk about four-point perspective. So four-point perspective is akin to two-point perspective with a little bit of a twist. So if we look here, this is our two-point perspective drawing. As you can see, these horizontal lines, it's everything, you know, it's straight up and down, but as far as where our vanishing points out here, everything is pretty much straight, whereas in four-point perspective or four-point perspective curve linear, there's a little bit of a curve to it. So if you've ever seen where they take a globe and they pull it apart, pull it off of a globe, and you've got sort of your longitude and latitude lines and they kind of curve, imagine that. So you've got, you've got your, your vanishing point here, your vanishing point here, but instead of those lines being straight, imagine if they were just to arc like this and arc, and these are our lines here. So you've got a little bit of a curvature towards your lines. And that is the basic principle behind four-point perspective. Five-point perspective, it's more akin to three-point perspective, but again with a twist. Actually, it's a little different than, than that. So uh, I'll show you an example here. So, well, first of all, let me say, if I, mean, I don't have one with me, but imagine if you had like a Christmas bulb or like a, a shiny sphere or something. Everything in there is gonna kind of warp around, almost like a fisheye lens. You'll see this, and sometimes this works when you wanna just show this massive scope that can't be contained in like a single panel. Uh, like if you were to look like a panoramic, if you ever looked at pan panoramic views, you'll notice how you know everything kind of curves with sort of almost like the curvature of the earth. So you're gonna see that with these curved linear perspectives four point and five point. So five point, imagine every single angle like this has a curve to it. So there's a curve above, there's a curve on the side, there's a curve on this side and that side. So it's like almost everything you're looking through, almost like a fisheye lens or a sphere. It's sort of your principle of three point perspective, but all those lines, instead of being straight, they're all going to curve. All right, so there are a couple of other types of perspective and principles that I want to discuss. One thing that I've touched on before in the previous episode is atmospheric perspective. Now this isn't necessarily a different kind of perspective. It is more or less a technique that's going to help you. Now when we talked about that vanishing point, the idea that when things get further away, they, they, it becomes harder and harder to see. So that's the idea behind atmospheric perspective. And you can accomplish this in a number of ways in comics. One of them is, is the line weight. So the stuff in your foreground is going to have a heavier line and going to get is going to get like a lighter, smaller, thinner line as you get away. For instance, I've shown this example before from The Walking Dead. You can kind of see out here in the foreground, uh, this is a really good example of one point perspective, as I was talking about before. One point perspective does come in handy and it is effective. So you've got one point perspective, everything's kind of going off in the distance. You can kind of see these buildings here in the sort of foreground of the background are darker, then it gets lighter and lighter until almost, I don't even know if you can see some of these here. It's so light you can almost, you almost might miss it. Same thing once again with this drawing of the Guardians of the Galaxy. We can see, you know, he's not, Art Adams isn't using like huge, bold lines for these buildings. Most of the bold lines and and you can also accomplish this with color using lighter colors as you get further and further away but that is the principle of atmospheric perspective. Okay so there's two other types of perspective that I want to just touch on briefly. You might not use these so much in comics uh, and they're not true perspective but they, they, they can come in handy. So for example I've worked in game designs and I've worked on a few games that require 
knowledge of isometric perspective. Now, isometric perspective is a little different. It's not true perspective. If you were to imagine a chessboard, all the squares on a chessboard, now imagine some building blocks, just square building blocks put on those where you could take one block, no matter what angle you look at it, you could take that block, you, you can move it from here to here and put it anywhere on that chessboard and it is going to fit fine. And you can multiply blocks. If you've got five blocks together, it's just going to take up space of five squares on your chessboard. That's the idea behind isometric perspective. It works really good with, with games where you're building elements and you don't have to design everything from a certain view. Uh, it works really good in 3D design. So I'll just show you, these are some icons or some, some elements that I use for a game. They're all square, they can all be put, like I could take this building and I could put it in the back of this thing here, this little hospital, put it over here, and it's all gonna fit nicely just like building blocks. That's, that's isometric perspective. Here's another example here. Uh, this is from Lorenzo from his uh, Deluxe Drawing Collections 3. Each square takes up the same amount of space. So you're, it's, it's not a true perspective, but for certain things, especially if you're just in a single panel, you can probably get away with some isometric stuff. It's very simple with everything basically fitting inside the confounds of that one cube. While perspective is super important, I really think you need to understand perspective, but like any rule in art, rules are made to be broken. So I always say understand the rules so you know when to break them. There's another form of semi-quasi uh, perspective and it's like a warped perspective. Uh, a really, here's a really good example of this from Scotty Young's I Hate Fairyland. You can see where his, this is his Fairyland building. He probably didn't lay this out all out on the grid, but you can tell he does understand perspective. You can see where it comes in handy to know perspective, but everything is warped and curved and it's it just, it's a little off, but that's by design because he's creating this, this world. If you've ever gone to uh, Disneyland or Disney World and you've looked at Toontown where the architecture is all wonky and skewed and it just doesn't look right, but it's got a really cool effect and that can come in handy for stories like I Hate Fairyland where we want things to have this really surreal look, very twisted and just not, you know, not like you would see in real life. But again, you need to understand perspective before you can start tweaking things around like that because you can cheat things around a little bit. Now, like I said, learn perspective so you can break it. But once you learn it, once you have that knowledge of perspective, don't be afraid to, you can cheat a little. I mean, we've talked about in the previous episode where you can take Google Maps, uh, and then you can kind of get your angle where you want it and then you can just trace that. One thing I do a lot of times with cars, I can draw a car in perspective, but sometimes it's just easier to find a car or a 3D model and just get it to where I want and then just trace over it. Understand that and then, you know, you can cheat a little bit. There's nothing wrong with that. Great artists cheat. Or is it steel? I say both. Here's a good example. So Eric Larson's Savage Dragon. This is uh, issue 200. I think he's coming up on 230 or something right now. So he's been doing this for a while. But he, he said that the great thing about being a writer and an artist is that you can write the stories so you don't have to draw anything you don't want to draw. I have a pretty good feeling he doesn't really care for drawing perspective, although I know he can do it. But there are situations like this where, I don't know if you can tell this, but this, this drawing, look at all these buildings. I mean, that looks like it's really complicated perspective. But if you look closer, it's a photo that's been manipulated into line art and everything. So even great artists that have been doing this forever, professional artists like Eric Larson's, they cheat from time to time. And I'm okay with that. And you should be too. As with any other part of the comic book making process, I just want you to have fun with this. I want you to learn and understand how to do it. And I think you're really going to be able to create some really cool stuff. Hopefully this gave you a good oversight into perspective. We'll dive a little deeper. We'll show you some practical applications of using perspective on the bonus issue and the quick tip. But uh, yeah, that's all I got to say for today on perspective. And I will see you guys later. That is all. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like what you saw and you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. Also, you can follow me at CircWorks on social media. And now you can support the work that I do on Patreon. Do you like making comics? Then go to CircWorks.com and pick up the Comic Maker Starter Kit. It's packed full of fonts, brushes, templates, and more. And best of all, it's totally free.